Well, welcome everyone to a March Madness post-game interview with Ron Harper Jr. All he did on this Thursday night here in December was hit the game winner to knock off number one Purdue. Unbelievable event at Jersey Mike's Arena, formerly known as the Rack. Uh, by far, the shot of maybe Rutgers history by you, Ron Harper Jr. 30 points, 10 boards, unbelievable effort. Let's first deal with the raw emotion of what it was like to hit a game winner like that. It was crazy, man. You know, once I put that ball up and it went in, I was jumping up and down like a little kid. It was, it's one of the greatest moments. You know, this team needed that win. And to be able to be there for my guys and hit that shot, it's just an unbelievable feeling. And watching the fans on the court, felt like there's thousands of people on the court within 10 seconds. And it, it was just so great. Yeah, that's, that's the first time we beat a number one team in the program's history. And that's a win that this team is going to carry with pride and we're looking to build on that. Ron, how were you, and I know you're a veteran player, but mm -hmm. how were you so in tune <clears throat> with time and score? Because you played this perfectly. Um, you know, once Travion made that layup, I kind of looked up, I glared up at the clock and I, I saw like 3.4 seconds or something. And I told him, well, I'll give me the ball. And I knew I had a, had like four or five dribbles to get up court and then I had to put one up. And as soon as I got to the, to the R, I looked up and there was like still a second and a half and I just I euro stepped and I threw one up and it went in. As soon as you released it, how certain were you that it was going in? Oh, I was so certain. It looked so good, felt good. And I hit the half court shot today and shoot around. So it, it, it's a full circle moment. So Jaden Ivey start, I mean, he was riding you and then he mm -hmm. kind of, you know, obviously he didn't want to commit a foul. Back yeah. up defensively how much was this sort of played to your advantage that you had just enough space enough court vision and vision to the basket to pull this off um you know they just they just hit a uh, what they thought was a game winner so the last thing on their mind was don't foul you know don't foul so as soon as jade and ivy and i think it was it was ethan they saw me dribbling up the court you know they didn't want to touch me they didn't want to foul me so i knew i kind of had free liberty to kind of go where i pleased and they kind of backed off at that last second as they saw me loading up the shoe, and it was just one fluid motion, and I threw it up. Hey, two possessions before, the possession mm -hmm. before Travion, you gave Rutgers the lead. At that moment in time, what did you think? Uh, one, I was thinking one stop. We got to get one stop. And it, it was pretty obvious where they were going. Travion was having a big night, so we expected that. But coming out of that huddle after they called the timeout, I told them guys, you know, uh, God forbid they score, give me the ball, and I'm going to send this home. And they trusted me, and they let me shoot that shot, and I went in. All right. You did this without Geo Baker. You mm -hmm. guys have had, you know, and he was ill. He'd been hurt with the hamstring. Mm -hmm. You really have not had a full team this whole season. Yeah. How do you explain pulling this off without Geo and without really having the momentum that you guys needed? Uh, you know, it's huge. They call Geo the big shot maker for a reason. Geo Baker, the big shot maker, you know. Usually in those crucial moments, we're looking at him to get a bucket, but with him out today, I knew I had to take that, take on that liberty and take on our responsibility to hit shots. And you know, it's just a matter of fact that my teammates are trusting me, my teammates believe in me. Even after I turned it over with like 36 seconds left, they told me we're gonna keep going to you, we're gonna get stopped, you're gonna get the ball right back. And those guys just believe in me, they trust me. And to get a win like that without your with your senior captain is great because Coach Pablo always preaches the next man up mentality and I feel, I feel like everybody that checked in the game brought us something. You know, Luke Nathan checked in the game for a minute. And he didn't shy down. He hasn't checked in all year. And then today he checked in against the number one team in the country. So it just shows what character the team has and, you know, just shows who we are. Yeah, look, there's no secret. You guys have struggled earlier in the year. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been easy. But how do you ensure there's momentum off of this, especially with your rival Seton Hall coming up on Sunday after the Pirates just knocked off Texas down the road? Wow. <laughs> Big night for New Jersey, it sounds like. Uh, but, you know, like you said, we got to carry this momentum. Tonight we proved ourselves that we can play with anybody in the country. And at the beginning of the season, we believed that. And then we obviously got out to a rough start. And uh, we needed this game for our confidence. And it feels good because I know all those guys in the locker room are feeling real good about their game, feeling real good about their craft. And that's exactly what we're going to need Sunday when we play a great scene hot team. Like you just said, they just knocked off Texas. Hey, one last thing. The last time Rutgers had a home game in the Big Ten with a full capacity. I was there. That was two years ago against Maryland when you guys beat Maryland basically the week before the world <clears throat> shut down. Mm -hmm. And that atmosphere was crazy. 
from what I could tell tonight, was off the charts. What yeah. was it like to be back in that environment? It was so great. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Maryland was the number nine seed when they came in. And we, and we beat the they were going for the Big Ten title that night. Yeah, and, and you know, that, that was a great night, and tonight was a great night. Like you said, the, the atmosphere at Jersey Mike's was great. You know, the fans, they really showed out. And it was a sold out house and it was really loud. That's a lot. That might be the loudest I've ever heard the place. And I know I say that a lot, but this time I really mean it. Number one team in the country, you know, got 8,000 and a half people showing up to a seven o'clock game on a Thursday. And the fans really showed out. And that's definitely what I missed last year playing in the COVID world. And it was just great to have everybody there. Hey, unfortunately, your family wasn't there. Uh, uh, what did your dad, Ron Harper Sr., text you, call you? What did he tell you? Oh, he just texted me. He told me to be the best player on the court. And, you know, just stuff like that. You know, I, I talked to my mom yesterday and she told me I'm going to have to will this team to win and that she believes in me and she trusts that I'm going to do the right thing and have a great game. So, you know, those, those two have the most trust. I, they have the most trust. They have the most faith in me ever. So I appreciate that, you know. But well, what have they said the after the shot? Oh, I even checked, but my mom texted me right now. Let's see, what'd she say? <laughs> uh, she, sent, she sent me a baby picture of her holding me in her arms. And... You know, and she sent me a red heart. I'm, I'm, I'm sure she has no words for that. And I, I wish she would have been here, but it's great. It, it's still great. And I'm sure she's somewhere in New Jersey crying her eyes out right now. How are you going to sleep tonight? I'm going to sleep like a baby, man. You know, 37 minutes is the number one team in the country. I'm going to sleep like a rock. Well, you deserve it, Ron. You've got a moment for the rest of your life. Congratulations. Yes, Thank you.